Hello. Hello. And uh, should I share my screen? Um, yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Abhishek Kaushik. I'm from India. Currently, I'm in my pre-final, that is third year of engineering, computer science engineering. And uh, I built a project called Creative List, which is basically a platform for students to showcase their side projects. Uh, I built this in my, I started this project in my second year of engineering, where I faced this problem that uh, in your college, when you go and see, there are a lot of people building interesting stuff, like a lot of projects, maybe technical projects, or it may be uh, some other uh, paintings, designs, there may be apps, some may be on Instagram, right? Uh, some may be building YouTube channels. So there are a lot of interesting things happening, but we are not able to see, or the students do not have the same platform to see all these together. And this is how I was motivated to build something such that all these people come together and we as students can help each other grow and give feedback such that maybe they take off as the new startup or something similar. Uh, uh, the most common question which I get here is why not product hunt? But product hunt is for professionals. And if students pitch on product hunt, like the, the like, it's, it's not meant for professional world, the projects which we build when we are learning, right? So this is the reason I built, I thought something is required for students or undergrads and hence create a list. I'll just show a basic how the landing page is. Uh, it's a platform for students to showcase their side projects. So we give them uh, a basically a dashboard where they can showcase whatever they have built. And apart from that, we also try to give them resources so that if they do not have any, they have not built any side project, they can access some resources to learn and get started. So how do we define a project? It can be anything, a website, hardware, blog, or Instagram page, or even YouTube channel. So these are the basic things which are supporting right now, six as of now. And uh, I'll, I'll just show this directly instead. So, all right. So uh, if you have a site, you can use this website if you have a site project to showcase, or if you're seeking help, any kind of help or if you're looking for online resources, or you just want to get inspired from creators out there around you. So let's just, uh, so you can just log in. And since I've already logged in, I can just go to the dashboard and, okay. So this is the dashboard which every user gets the first time they log in. And what you can see here is uh, the status bar, which is basically this, it shows you the number of post views you had, something similar to LinkedIn. Uh, you also have um, the number of post views you have, the number of reacts you, uh, reacts you had in the last post, and at the same time, the number of active users. Um, this, the main purpose of me adding this status bar was to basically keep, uh, you know, the effect of showing users that engagement is happening and people are looking around what you are building. So this was the main purpose I had added this status bar. And so these are the projects. These all projects are live right now. So there are websites, we have Snapshare, and this is by a friend of mine, he built a simple project, uh, basically a kind of Instagram, local Instagram. We have this, uh, there's something called Apna Bihar, which is a, a journalist website. There are YouTube channels, we have blogs. Uh, there, there was an interesting blog on speed reading, and this, this, this one was uh, by another friend of mine. It is basically on COVID data. He, he analyzed how things are working and how the government is uh, releasing data and stuff. So there are Instagram pages, uh, hardware projects. I'll, I'll just show around. So what happens is after you have posted your project, uh, what users in this platform can do is they can click on any of your project and they can access the website link. If you have a website link, they can access the website link. They can also showcase their GitHub so in this case, for example, Snapshare, it also has a GitHub repository. So you can also check out the GitHub repository and you also have the website. And at the same time, they can also share. And the main purpose is to get feedback so that students can improve and hence the comment section. And yeah, basically this is uh, what for now it is. And this is the dashboard section. This is the my post. This is obvious whatever i have posted i can see whatever stuff i've posted and yes these are the side projects so you can see websites youtube so if you click on them you can see all websites the dashboard 
is a collective of all possible different categories of projects. But if you click on individual categories, uh, you can see also there are these many websites right now. There's Moss Code Generator, there's RoboSpace, a lot of stuff uh, to the application. Okay. Uh, so this is how it works. So you have the categories in the sidebar and the important part is resources. So there are two things, ideas and link base. I'll explain what ideas is. Ideas by the name is basically a collection of uh, ideas. So uh, my initial idea was that uh, students will come together and share their ideas brainstorm out. But uh, what I realized is that it's not, it, it doesn't work that way for students. Like unlike professionals on Twitter, they share some ideas and you know, everyone kind of brainstorms. It doesn't happen in students. The students have the fear that somebody will steal their idea. It's very naive, but it's true. So what I'm thinking of is I'll replace this entire section with some preset ideas and students can just directly see and access. I'll, I'm thinking of removing the uh, uh, discussion or the user posting section. And this, this is the coolest thing I think is the link base. So what is link bases? This is if you say, for example, you come across some courses on the internet or you came across some really good uh, content on the internet, you can come and post it here. So uh, there are a lot of things. So uh, uh, say, for example, someone wants to build a smart home automation using IoT. So there's a creator called Sasol Sagar who, who has added links. So you can click on this link and see uh, what this thing is about, right? And there are, so they were back in April, uh, Fugal site had released a lot of uh, courses for free for students. So they can just go to this site and directly access. So it's kind of, you know, uh, people come and contribute whatever they see nice. Uh, there are project ideas. We have beginner's guide to web development. So the students initially face a lot of struggles to find out resources on the internet. There are plenty, but which one to start with? So when when the creators come together and share that, hey, this was uh, something which really worked for me, by the uh, upwards, it automatically gets to the top and hence the beginners can directly access the best uh, of all the links and you know stuff, resources on the internet. So this is basically uh, all about it. And the another feature is notifications. So it's natural, like yeah, anyone gives likes or upvotes or project comments, you get a notification here. You can also check out uh, all your notifications. Okay, so I don't have a notification. Okay, so and there's another section called my account. So you can edit your account, you have profile views, you can add your social media channel. And there are a lot of interesting stuff I'm building in the next release, uh, which will also allow the users to see more in depth about what's happening with their projects, how many people have seen, how many people have reacted. And uh, I'm also thinking of building something uh, which uh, sort of, you know, they can showcase uh, as, as something, a kind of CV kind of stuff, a creative CV where they can showcase, hey, I build these all things in creative risk. So that is the plan as of now. And yes, uh, the next most uh, release or the next feature which I'm building on is for communities like this is gamification is very important. Otherwise, uh, the users do not come back, right? So the gamification is basically I'm adding uh, something called features of badges. So when you add new comment, when you engage with other creators who help out by giving them feedback, you get points. When you create new projects, you get points. And by that, your position or basically your reputation increases. Something like Stack Overflow has or uh, you know, uh, Reddit has. So this will motivate them to engage more and hence it will self-sustain. I'm currently developing and within a week or so I will be releasing that feature. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, another thing which will be released is uh, this is basically a website and uh, what I've seen from analytics is that a lot of users, creators are students and students are stuck with their phones. So uh, phone is a natural go, but since I do not, my uh, phone, uh, Android app or iOS app is a natural first choice, but since I do not know Android programming, I will be converting this into a progressive web app so that at least some of them can feel the uh, feel of, you know, uh, native app. Yeah, so that's all uh, for my, uh, basically the demo. And uh, I'm, if you want me to share more uh, technical details, I am open to it. Like, 
Should I share more details? Um, yeah, it looks uh, it looks really cool. Um, I like I like how uh, how professional the front end looks. It's very nice. detailed. Um, can you yeah, so can you talk about more like um, like what kind of features you're using in Flask or kind of how you approach adding a new feature like you're talking about? Sure, sure. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, summarize or basically the most I can tell about the most important libraries which I use, which I'm using for this project. Uh, the first one, the most common Flask WTF forms, which is, you know, the most common, it, it is something which Flask has given so that you can uh, kind of, it's a secure way of dealing with HTML forms. You do not have to first write the HTML part and then uh, validate it in the backend. Flask WTF does it for you. You just have to add what kind of fields you need, what kind of validation you need. Suppose it's an email, suppose it's a password, how long it has to be. So that's Flask WTF. Another thing is uh, Flask caching, which is basically it caches the uh, views. Uh, so for example, if, if uh, say for example, I have the landing, this, this landing page, I do, not, I do not change it every day, right? The dashboard on the other hand is dynamic, it changes every moment. So this, what I can do is I can cache this in the browser itself such that the uh, I use it uh, like the loading speed is reduced, so I I just cache this view, and this is what how Flask caching works. Uh, yeah, the next is Flask Socket IO, which is uh, the initial version of Creative List version one was very different from what it is right now version two. So in that I used Flask Socket IO, which had a feature called discussion where uh, students can dis could discuss. So I used Flask Socket IO there for you know. Uh, end to end communication, life, real time communication between two people or a group of people. But in this, I've removed the discussion feature and instead I've added notification. So for notification, I'm using class socket IO. So when someone reacts or does something, so you get an instant notification for that. Uh, apart from that, I'm using MongoDB. So PyMongo is the default uh, extension. And I'm using Rake NLTK, uh, Rake, Rake NLTK, which is basically for extracting keywords. So when you see these keywords, say for example, draw it, your database structure, visualize the names, these are uh, generated by the uh, uh, system. So it's, it's by default using the Rake library and for mails I'm using SendGrid and another important uh, feature is the inspire letter, which goes out weekly, which compiles the top projects uh, in a week and sends it then to all the users, something kind of newsletter kind of thing. And, and that, that has to run in the background weekly. So I'm using something called AP scheduler, which is advanced Python scheduler. It runs in the background. It's just a uh, replacement for cron, uh, uh, you know, uh, service. It's a good one. We had a, um, sure. if I can interrupt, we had sure. a, uh, uh, we had a question on our YouTube stream. Uh, how is the application secured? Are you like, how are you authenticating? Uh, what, what kind of security extensions are you using, if any? Okay, uh, I guess he's talking about uh, the sign up process. Is it, uh, if, if, if it's the sign up process, I'll talk about that. For sign up, I'm uh, securing the passwords, like I'm using basic security, which is basically I'm storing the passwords in, in encrypted format in uh, SHA-256 encryption. And uh, apart from that, there's not a lot of data being stored. It's, uh, the password is secured and there's additional feature which I've added is uh, Google sign up. So, so you can just use social logins uh, for that. And uh, apart from that, yes, Flask WTF, uh, which has something called CSRF. It's, it takes, ca takes care of a lot of, uh, you know, uh, the secure part, security part, it takes care, it handles it basically. And, Hence, I do not have to deal much with that. So I'm using all those stuff. And yeah, that's that's basically it. If, if you have any specific questions, sure. Like what exactly on security? Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions. Uh, that's uh, really great demo. Um, if there's a last feature you want to talk about or share or something cool you used in Flask, uh, now's your chance. Uh, I'll, I'll just share this in short about the uh, journey about what happened. So this for all the budding creators who are building in Flask. 
uh, initially when I started out, uh, I didn't get a lot of tutorials. I had to go through, jump through a lot of tutorials to get started. The version one of this website took me about six months. I had no idea about backend. Last was my first go to backend technology. So it took me six months and it looked very ugly and very different from it. But this version, which you are seeing right now, I built it in just one month. So if you are a beginner creator building out there, do not give up. Just uh, you know, keep working and building stuff out there. There are a lot of resources online, and uh, I think the Flask community is really great. They have been very responsive and Stack Overflow is really good. So that's about it. If if anyone has any query or you need any help, feel free to reach out to me. Just one uh, one uh, one sure. last uh, thing. Uh, what did you find most difficult to learn? What part uh, of uh, the Flask uh, ecosystem or Flask way of doing or Flask pattern or whatever? Uh, okay, uh, honestly, this since this was my first uh, language, first, first backend technology I'd learned, I had no idea about how other frameworks are, you know, stuff work. So I had tough figuring out how the routes and views work. There's something called blueprints, right? So the blueprint concept like sent my head into a dip. I, I was like dizzy. What what the hell is blue, blueprints? So uh, these were the uh, and there's a lot of other basics things which 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 I got stuck in. Like when there's a route. So what is a decorator? What is uh, uh, how how is the data retrieved? What is a secure? Basically, it was all the beginner stuff. I was stuck in those. There were some very very simple questions like. Is it a secure way of doing the approach which I'm using to connect with the database to retrieve information from the database? Is it a secure way? There are a lot of such doubts. And I think I could have better answered the questions if I had experience with Node.js or uh, uh, Django, for example. I would have compared and given analysis. But since this was my first uh, uh, language or basically the framework I learned, basically everything was kind of tough. It was, you know, I'm clearing out my concepts on the go. Which, which, which was tough. And I think uh, the resources available are not very, very good. Like there needs to be a lot of community resources and I'm planning out of uh, uh, contributing uh, myself too, so that beginners do not face a lot of trouble. Um, I will say that that was, that was it for me. Great. Uh, thank you, Abhishek. Uh, thanks for sharing creator lists and showing us how you're using Flask with it. And I encourage everybody to check it out. Looks like a pretty cool project. Thank you, everybody. So I think uh, that's all for today.